Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Would you join me in the welcoming gathering prayer into your bulletin? Loving God, we are so grateful for your invitation to enter your heart of love. As best we can, we come in. Center us as we worship. Welcome us into the hope and joy of our salvation through your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we have been working our way through the book of James, I chose James chapter 5, verse 16 for our meditation verse this morning. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Let us meditate upon these words.
not just for our benefit, but for the benefit of the kingdom and all those who live each day by your hand. Help us to love all as you love, unconditionally, with grace and mercy. Send to us your spirit, that we might follow the path of love with wisdom going on before us as our guide. Amen. Amen. If you would turn with me to page 846, as we will read together our Psalm 124, and our hymn response will be God is so good. And for three years and six 
months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save a sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. And our gospel reading this morning is from Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 50. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward, afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, Whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. For it is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where the worm never dies, and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves, and be at peace with one another. The word of God for the people of God. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Jesus is sacrificed. 
sacrifice on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and to live by faith in him. Wisdom helps us understand what it means to be in Christ, taking all that Jesus said and did as our example for holy living. And if we will, can we allow our own conversion moment to help us choose wisely to take up our cross and follow Jesus, joining all of heaven, declaring the glory of God. Next, through the understanding of the laws, decrees, commandments, and ordinances, we learn that we can grow wise in our understanding of God's laws. God's grace and God's mercy prove God's unconditional love for us, providing the way to live together in love and relationship and peace. We are reminded of Jesus' words of wisdom to set our minds on the things of God. Today in the lectionary, we jump ahead from James chapter 3 to James chapter 5. We've skipped a few good topics. I encourage you to read chapter 4. In it, James calls us to draw near to God through repentance and humble ourselves in our return to holy living. He addresses the topics of finding fault and slander with the words of verse 11. Do not speak against one another. And he follows it with warnings about being judgmental. In chapter 4, there's also a piece of wisdom reminding us that God alone holds the future. Even though we plan, we must not forget to seek God and to submit to the will of God and to do so in humility. We are not to become arrogant, boastful, or brag, or even worse, think of ourselves as self-sufficient without needing God. Chapter 5 begins with a cry to be patient and to practice patience. In verse 7 it says, Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. Or to say it another way, to wait upon the Lord. And then we come to today's text. Chapter 5, 13 through 20, which closes out the letter with words on how we are to pray for one another. Those who are happy should sing. Those who are sick should be prayed over with anointing. Those in need of being restored should confess, repent, and be recognized, reconciled with the community. And in all things, pray, pray, pray. As James says in verse 16, the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. The book of James contains wisdom in simplicity and straightforward advice, and Wesley called it the great antidote because of its powerful warnings against the poison of sin and worldly living. Instead, we want to live in God's sanctifying grace, the grace we experience every day with God, in relationship with God. The relationship that in joyful response allows us to put our faith into action. Now let's use what we've learned and about wisdom and look at the corresponding text that we find in the book of Mark. Here we read of Jesus' interactions with the disciples. Now, what words of wisdom can we get right from our Savior? Well, I'll give you a hint. There are words on how to accept each other, love each other, protect each other, and how to let God's wisdom lead us into peace with one another. Jesus speaks of two important aspects of peace in this scripture. Inclusion with the words, whoever is not against us, is for us. Opening us to understand that even in our theological differences, as believers of Christ for salvation, we are one. We are united. We have a common denominator. Second, Jesus speaks of the care and protection of little ones, vulnerable ones, with the words, if any of you cause one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, 
It would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. That's pretty bold. These words are not spoken for us to judge one another, but to be proactive in encouraging holy living and protection of the vulnerable among us. We call Jesus the Prince of Peace and look to his life to see a life and ministry that was lived in the practice of peace. And we know that peace with justice is controversial and can be dangerous. Yet even in the garden when they came to arrest Jesus, Jesus sought peace by telling the disciples to put their swords away and proceed in peace. When we are at war with ourselves because we lack a healthy relationship with our Creator, it is extremely hard to be at peace. Yet we desire to have that peace that passes all understanding. And we can only have that peace through our relationship with Jesus, through the Holy Spirit that points us always to God, our God of love and unity, our God of community. Jesus said, have salt in yourself. Be at peace with each other. Sometimes it seems our disagreements and arguments can grow so large that it seems there's no chance of peace. Conflicts happen in our homes, in our communities, in our churches, and in our world. And some issues go on for so long that the reason it started becomes blurred. Who will be the peacemaker? Who will stand up for justice and what is right in peaceful ways? Who among us will be at peace and work for peace? In our Mark text, what we are reading is a turf war. Today, we might see it as a church war. A war between differing theologies and interpretations. The disciples exhibited an attitude of us versus them. And it was a problem. And after walking around the area of Capernaum, John comes to Jesus and gives a report explaining that they were out among the people and they saw man casting out demons and using the name of Jesus to do so. And he says, and we tried to stop them because he was not following us. We stop right there. He was not following us. We know and we recognize the exclusion of that statement. What exactly was the disciples' complaint? Was it the casting out of the demon? Or was it somebody else using the name of Jesus, using his authority <clears throat> as not one of us? Think about that for a minute. I've read this passage so many times, but this week, while meditating upon it to, pre to prepare my sermon, what jumped out at me was that the disciples were practicing what I like to call holy discrimination. They thought that they were justified in their actions in doing so. But what they were doing was alienating others from their group because they were not part of them. It may seem obvious to us that the name of Jesus and the work that was being done in his name was what was most important. But did the disciples see it that way? Well, no, not really. The disciples at the time following Jesus were narrowing the scope of Jesus' ministry with their us versus them thinking. They knew they were the chosen people. The Jews and the disciples were surely chosen, each and every one of them, handpicked to follow Jesus. But soon the doors of Judaism would open to all the world, and all would be welcome. Jesus, Jews and Gentiles alike, would be welcomed by Jesus. And so Jesus' response was the wisdom that they needed. Whoever is not against us is for us. Jesus united people in love. We are urged again and again to accept each other and live in peace. 
the disciples, seeing those they did not know using the name of Jesus, sought to shut them down. Jesus said, don't do that. And don't be stumbling blocks for each other, causing another to sin. Instead, be advocates for peace. Jesus ends with words of wisdom about salt. Salt, yes. Every day, salt. Then and now. Jesus says, be at peace with one another. Have salt, Jesus says. Be like salt. What is the job of salt? It is to preserve what is best. And if others are working for the kingdom, don't stop them. Preserve and protect. Those who follow me are to preserve and protect. Who? The weak, the children, the defenseless, the poor, the sick, the widow, the lost, the lonely, the list goes on and on, doesn't it? Protect them. Make sure they have peace. This is our work of justice. Preserve what is good by being at peace. Now, being at peace in ourselves and with God is the only way that we can accomplish peace with others. Jesus said, be preserved. Be salt. Be useful. Be flavorful. Here's a small chemistry lesson for you. Sodium is an active element found naturally, but only in combination with something else, in combined form. Sodium always links itself to another element. In the case of salt, it is chlorine. Oddly, which is a poisonous gas, chlorine can stand on its own. Sodium cannot. The result is sodium chloride, which is common table salt. The substance we use to preserve meat and to bring out the flavor in foods. This combination, which is balanced, becomes a good combination and is desirable for use. We should be like that. Balanced. A good combination of wisdom and faith. And desirable to be used by God, we should be salt. Love and truth can be like sodium and chlorine. Love without wisdom or truth is still love, but it is so much better when combined. Wisdom, when combined with justice, brings about change. Change that works towards peace. But wisdom or truth by itself can be offensive, sometimes even poisonous, when spoken using harsh or hurtful words, spoken without love. It can turn people away from the gospel message of Jesus. When truth and love are combined, we have what Jesus called the salt of the earth. And we're able to preserve and bring out the beauty of our faith. Not a faith that looks at the practices of another and tells them to stop, but a faith that proclaims peace. Anytime we gather, we have the opportunity for our words to edify and encourage each other in faith. To focus on the things of the divine and seek discernment for holy living. We can be the salt Jesus calls us to be, providing words of wisdom, adding rich flavor to holy conversation. Let's do that. Let's be a people who seek to embrace God's wisdom, to accept God's salvation, and to work for the purpose of peace in all things that we say and do. Do it to bring honor and glory to God, to further the kingdom of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
and are in continual need of forgiveness. We want to live holy lives that reveal your goodness and honors you by returning our thanks and praise for your unending love and for the ways in which we are blessed. We thank you for sending Jesus to teach us of love and clarify all that the prophets have said about living in relationship with you. In the words of wisdom of the scriptures, be it Old or New Testament, may we take our knowledge and accept it in our hearts that we may be joined with your spirit of wisdom, love, and grace. Grant us wisdom to know our Christian action is to be done through acts of love that reveal you are alive and with us in the world. Help us to recognize truth. Help us to live in your holiness by your commands as we love our neighbors as ourselves. Today we lack the words to fervently pray for peace. We have a deep longing for peace in our world. We want peace, peace in our homes, peace in our communities, peace not only in our country, but in every country all over the earth. We long for peace to prevail and shalom and healing to begin for all peoples. Today, parts of our own country have experienced heavy devastation from storms this week. We pray for safety. We pray for families to be found and rescued. We pray for teams of police, fire, and EMTs. Give them strength and skill to persevere in their tasks. May all involved recognize the wisdom to know what is most important. And for neighbors near and far to step up and provide for those who have lost everything. We are your people, created in your image. Called to you through your love and the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, our Savior who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We now come to a time in our service where we want to share our tithes and offerings with God. As God has so richly blessed each and every one of us, let us give to him.
children will be amazing friends.